So here we both got the GoPro 7th generation. So this is a camera made four years ago and the Insta360 X3. Now, my theory is that this GoPro 7 made four years ago has significantly better uh, video quality when comparing it in the action, action cam uh, mode. Even if you film in 360 and extract a clip uh, from that 360 image into a flattened image, it's still gonna be a lot, a lot worse than the GoPro uh, Hero 7 Black. So this is kind of like the reason why I think you cannot throw away your GoPro yet and get it and have it completely be replaced with an Insta360. Now let's first, let's go into both the menus. So the startup time for both these are about the same. So let's press the power button. Okay, uh, seems like it's just a tad longer for the Insta360, but honestly, I've never had any issues with that. So in terms of the menu and how you use it, I have to say they're both pretty intuitive. Now I do find that the GoPro sometimes is a little bit laggy. It's like not very responsive. Like when I touch things, it just, it just very, very kind of annoying to use. So I'm trying to actually make sure I don't have anything messed up here. So if I want to change my resolution and stuff like that, it can be a little bit jarring to do it. Now with the Insta360, everything is very snappy. One of the things that really impressed me was how big the display is. So if we switch to maybe 360 mode, so I'm gonna just switch between, okay, so that's the, you can see that's the camera lens pointing that way. Okay, we're in action mode, let's go to 360. Let's go into video. And just being able to swap between the resolution modes, it's a lot more snappier. So that gives a big pro to the Insta360 in terms of just interface and day-to-day -day use. Uh, yeah, you can access the quick settings. You can, you know, change things like um, the volume. So you can make it like a high volume to be notified when you're recording or not recording. Uh, you can do indicator light. So whenever you're recording, you get this like light on both sides over here. There's a light here and the light there. It turns red. You can change the audio settings. So let's say direction focus, wind noise reduction, and stereo. So right now I'm, I'm going to be testing. I'm going to be trying to test mostly in direction focus. And that basically points the audio source towards you. Towards you. So other menu things like here, like this one here, you can put on the dive case. So now we got the lock, so slide up to unlock. So this button here enables the lens guard. And this is something that you enable if you have the lens guard on. And that's another con with this Insta360 is that I find that the, because the lens is kind of oval shaped, it's kind of like more circular and more, more susceptible to, to be touched and scratched. I found that the GoPro is a lot easier to replace and it's a lot safer. So like, you're not gonna like smash it or anything like that. So I feel more inclined to use this in action cam ways. And this is a little bit more delicate and I'm a little bit more afraid to, to actually use the Insta360 versus my GoPro 7. One of the cool things is that you can have a Bluetooth remote, which I don't have right now, or you can control it with the app. You can adjust the brightness of the screen. So let's just keep it to normal. And I find that the brightness and, and during the sun, um, like when you're out and about, I find it to be pretty good. So I don't have to worry about any, any of that stuff. So you can swipe to the different modes, active HDR. Um, that just means that your shadows and your bright sun, sun skies are, retain a lot of detail, but this can't be used in a low light situation. If I um, scroll to the left of my menu, I can actually adjust like, like white balance and stuff like that. If you go in action cam mode, so if I go just press this button over here, go right into the action cam mode, I can actually have more fine grain control. So for example, during one of my vlogs, I was in manual mode just to make sure that my shutter speed was one over 50 because I'm shooting at 24 frames per second and that's just the rule. You want your shutter speed to be one over 50. But uh, you know, I'm just gonna keep it in auto for now. So this button here makes it very easy to switch between 360 or the single lens mode, which is kind of like the action cam mode. So there are certain things that you can do in the 360 versus the action lens or single lens mode. So if you go back to the single lens mode, here you can change different things. So for example, you can have me mode and me mode is really cool. If you have this on the selfie stick, like over here and you have it fully extended, you can have it so that it always follows you. And I really like that feature. I think it's a really nice thing, except that the resolution is very, very poor. It's only 1080p and it looks kind of worse in, in other situations where you're using a different field of views and stuff like that. Every setting in this app has a field of view change. So it's a little bit confusing, but you can start from like linear which zooms in the most and obviously loses a lot of resolution. And then you can go wide, ultra wide, or go max. The amount of 
configurations you have, like by the way, you can switch to 16 by nine, or you can switch to TikTok mode, not nine by 16, which just means it's a vertical orientation. So there are a lot of different modes, but you get used to it over time. So let's continue in the single lens mode. So we've got me mode, video, um, loop recording, which is really cool. That's, that this means that you're gonna be recording for five minutes indefinitely. So let's say you're filming something and you wanna film a trick on skateboarding. And let's say you set, set up this camera with the GoPro, or sorry, with the stick, and it's filming you. So you just let it run for indefinitely. And then when you land your trick, you can just press the uh, record button to stop it. And you'll only capture the last one minute or five minutes or 10 minutes. This saves you from having to go through like gigabytes of footage. So it's a really handy feature. And this is also a feature that's on the GoPro 7. So let's go into 360. Now 360 gives you a little bit, like I said, active HDR. You get this time-lapse, okay? So time-lapse just means that you're shooting a static video. It's 8K, 360 degrees, which is really cool. And yeah, so that's one of the settings. This is time shift. So it's, the GoPro has all these things. It's called different, it's just different marketing terms. But time shift basically means that you can walk and get kind of cool. Of a, it's, like, it's like a time lapse, but you're walking with it. Bullet time. So you'll need the special add-on to like whip the camera in 360 to do the bullet time trick. I uh, haven't tried it yet. I think it's a little bit gimmicky, but it's pretty cool. But I don't know how often I would use it. Star lapse, just to film stars. You have burst mode. You have interval, which is really cool. If you want to like track something for a long period of time, you can take photos at specific intervals. And you can see that the intervals here are all the way up to 120 seconds, so about two minutes. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you want to see your previous footage, you can swipe to the uh, right and you can just go through the different footages over here. Now, the one thing is that when you are looking at 360 footage, unfortunately, you cannot actually see, uh, play it on this device. You have to either connect it to your phone, uh, to your phone like, like this, which I don't really like. Um, I think you can use a direct USB-C connection, which I think is more stable. I was using the Wi-Fi connection. I just didn't find it very fun. The same thing applies to GoPros. Like every time I tried to connect it to my phone, it was awful. It was an awful experience. Trying to have a direct connection between a device over five gigahertz or whatever band it's using, and then trying to have gigabytes of data being shared between these two devices in real time, just not fun. So it's, I prefer just to pop out the SD card from here. Um, that's where the battery compartment is. Up, download all this footage onto my computer and then use the Insta360 desktop app on my PC at least, or I think it supports on Mac as well. And that way it's gonna be so much easier to like track motion and, and you know extract flatten videos from 360 images and, and obviously view all your 360 footage. So I much prefer to use the desktop app, but for those that are you know, Gen Z people, like they'll use their phones probably. So I think I pretty much covered everything in terms of the kind of the UI. I hope that gave you a quick rundown of what it's like to use the 360. Overall, the UI is pretty snappy. It's pretty responsive. It's very intuitive. Had no issues with it. I think it's a little bit better than the GoPro 7. One thing I like about the GoPro 7 is that it has a lot less options. So it's a lot simpler. Like for example, the different field of views, it's just, there's only three. There's linear, wide, and ultra wide. And so, yeah. Sometimes there's when you have too many decisions, it can be a little fatiguing, but honestly, you'll get used to it. And I think it's it's fairly intuitive. It just pick you can pick it up very soon. Now, the last thing I want to quickly mention is this side button with the Q. You can see Q here, and that's next to the power button. By the way, these are like uh, speakers on on this side. The speakers on this side. There's a mic here, uh, and there's a mic over here, and a mic here. So you get 360 audio. Let's talk about the quick menu. So if I go to the quick menu. And this is something that I really like. Um, this is similar to what's in the later GoPro series, like the GoPro 9 and stuff. But basically you can customize a setting so that you know if you're skiing or skateboarding, you can quickly go to it. And I find that this is very convenient. I will be using this a lot when I wanna quickly change the scene that I'm filming. Let's say I'm filming a vlog or let's say I'm filming someone else skateboarding. So in terms of the speed at which it records, as soon as you press the button, let's test that out. So I'm on 360 mode and I'm on the highest mode on this, on this camera, the GoPro, I'm gonna press uh, record one, two, three. So it's already started recording. So yeah, there's maybe like a one second delay with this. And I noticed that it's a little bit slower to start and stop recording versus the GoPro. So they both ended around the same time where they gave option. So they both stopped recording around the same time. Let's turn it off. And let me just show you how the battery looks. Okay, so if you want to get access to the USB-C, it's really nice. It's a little flop like that. I really appreciate how easy it is. 
And if you wanna get access to the battery or the SD card, which I do recommend, one of the things about transferring with the USB-C cord was that it was intolerably slow. It was transferring about 38 megabytes a second. And I think directly from the SD card, it should be a lot faster if you put it like into a uh, SD card reader. So let's pop this out, see what it looks like. So that's a really nice battery. Now let's compare it. So here's the SD card slot right in here. You just push that to pop it out. You don't need any fancy SD card. It's a pretty basic one. Just don't get the slowest one. Now the battery is quite nice. So let's compare it to the GoPro. So yeah, you can see that the GoPro, at least the seventh version is really small. It's adorable, um, really, really tiny. But the funny thing is that I found that the, the GoPro battery to be pretty acceptable. I'm, I mean, I'm not filming all day. I'm not filming like repetitively. So I don't need to film that much. I think for me, skateboarding one hour, like a one hour session of skateboarding, just filming, especially when you're running this constantly, putting it on a tripod and filming someone continuously. Um, I'm very impressed with the battery life on both of these. And this one obviously lasts a little bit longer because it's got a bigger battery. And yeah, that's about it. Now this does get a little warm, but I haven't had it shut down on me. Um, I'm filming myself and it does get a little bit warm, just like the GoPro. Like a lot of these cameras, unfortunately get warm, but that's just how they are. But I don't think it has any detrimental effect. So nicely sealed for waterproof rating, even though it is rated for waterproof, I'm kind of hesitant to use it in the water versus the GoPro, which has gone through a lot of trips and a lot of fun. It is certainly durable and has stand the test of time very well. 395 grams with the Insta360 with the GoPro with its own stick. So if we compare that to the GoPro with its own, this is a pretty heavy tripod, <laughs> 320 grams. So it's a lot lighter, except this is a whole entire tripod that can be extended out. So it's a, basically a pole. Okay, so let's measure the GoPro with the, its own case on. The GoPro 7 weighs just a mere 141 grams. We get 178 grams. So it's not that much heavier, to be honest. It's just a lot longer. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this accessory is absolutely worth it. Now, the Insta360 tripod and extended pole is amazing. The way that it extends out is just phenomenal. It, it goes out really, really far. I can't really show it in right now, but I'll play a clip of how, how well it's short, um, how well it extends out. And the tripod is actually very, very sturdy. It's a made of a really good material. It's not cheap. Everything feels really sturdy. I absolutely love this. And it totally makes sense to have to actually buy this because if you're getting the Insta360, the whole point of it is to have a really long extended pole so that you can film yourself do all sorts of crazy stuff. So 100% recommend this. Definitely, definitely get it. And I'll show you how it works. In fact, the official tripod extended pole for the Insta360 is way better than any uh, GoPro tele telepod pole I ever had in my life. So this one's really flimsy, it's really cheap. It can easily fall down. This one is super stable. And I would even use this for maybe uh, like this ZV-1 camera would, would be really, really cool. So yes, the tripod does actually support my Sony ZV-1, even with the cage on it. The tripod is actually more impressive than the camera, something that I'm gonna definitely buy for my other cameras. It's very underrated in my opinion, especially when compared to the overly priced Joby Telepod Pro, which I reviewed on this channel. The Joby Telepod was a lot heavier. It didn't extend as high and it would always fall down. It would always collapse because it's telescoping mechanism is like a twist and lock whereas Insta360's pole uses friction. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely be buying more of these tripod poles from Insta360 for my other cameras. The only thing you'll need to buy is a ball joint in case you're gonna be using this with a regular camera. So the desktop app is really good. Right now I'm on Windows and I'm using the Insta360 Studio and you don't need to have the actual device plugged in or anything. You can, you can just copy all the files from the SD card onto your local drive and just import them all, so just like this. So it's gonna parse all the metadata, it's really quick. Okay, and then on the left panel, you can see that there's all these clips here and it's very easy to reframe. So for example, if you wanna use tracking motion, you can obviously do, use deep track or control T for a quick shortcut. So I can hit control T, circle this person here, start tracking. And it's a, it does a really good job. The AI is absolutely amazing. Now, another thing you can do is go into the 360 view, and that's just at the top over here, and you can play with different field of views. So for example, we can switch between this one, uh, more like a fisheye, 
This is the fun one that everyone talks about. You can go on full screen if you want to screen capture this. You can go into this type of view, so the 360 camera. And what else we got? We got the, the fully stitched up view. So that just brings everything all together. And the last one is this one here. So you just get one entire view. So I can just play. And then you can see how it looks like that. So that's really fun to play with. But if you're going to be reframing, you can use the deep track. Or, for example, you can frame it yourself. So, for example, let's say I want to position the camera here. And maybe I want to clip around here. So I can use the sharp keyboard shortcut. The... This, these are the keyboard shortcuts, control uh, square bracket. It's very, it's pretty intuitive. So let's say the person is skateboarding. Okay, I wanna just start over here. So I'll put an end point over there and I'll hit control K, which is to add a marker or you can use, click the button over here, mark as keyframe. So it's very simple, control K. And then from there you can adjust the field of view. You can adjust the distortion and stuff like that and the panning and tilt and all that stuff. But you can just do that with your mouse. So as I click here, because okay, I like it here. So it pops the trick here. I'm gonna just center the camera, hit Control K, and then he messes up. So I'm just gonna put another Control K there. And then I'm gonna end the frame or end the clip there. So now I'm gonna hit play. And then you can see. So here you can see the time frames over there as I marked. And yeah, so this can get really complicated if you want to, you know, film in 360, shoot now, frame later. That's the motto with the Insta360. Now, of course, the deep track is the easiest way to get um, just a subject in the center of your frame. One of the things I forgot to mention is that if you, let's say you want to track this person over here, you'll just circle them. And then I'm not sure what this does, center the target. I just click that all the time, but it seems to always center the target. I'm, I'm not sure why we do that. So. There you go. That's another way of tracking someone. And then you can see it created all these keyframes at the bottom over here. And like I said, you can adjust the field of view. You can go in, out, just play, play with different types of uh, field of views that you want. The last main feature I want to mention about the Insta360 X3 is bullet time. Is it hard to like do it at the same time? Yeah, like coordination wise, yeah. <laughs> to do yeah. a trick? Yeah. Just riding I could do it for sure, but... Here, you see my friend having a really hard time trying to capture a bullet time sequence whilst trying to perform a trick on a skateboard. I think bullet time is best suited for just a basic standing still position. As you can tell, the results don't look that great in this situation. To wrap up this video, I think that the Insta360 X3 is a very fun camera that allows really creative shots. The menu and software are absolutely great, even on desktop and mobile. The only real downside to using this technology is the poor image quality that you get, especially when compared to a standard action cam with a flattened 180 degree image. I will refrain my full recommendation for this type of camera until the technology gets better and catches up with that of a regular action cam like the GoPro Hero 11 Black. If you want to learn more about the Insta360 X3 compared against my four-year-old GoPro, check out this video that I published on my main tech review channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Anyways, if this video helped you anyway, please do give a like, it really helps out. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you in the next video.